Hello dear tea friends from around the world and welcome to a new tea class with me, Stefan Erler. I'm the founder of the Tea Masters blog, which I created in 2004. And I also manage the t-masters.com boutique. It's a place where I select uh, all the wonderful teas and teaware that I find here in Taiwan. Today we are going to talk about, yes, one of the very best uh, oolongs in Taiwan, maybe even the best. I, I think it's not much of a contest if we speak about um, uh, high mountain oolongs because we are going to speak about um, Da Uling, uh, the De Da Uling terroir, I will tell you all about it. And uh, very precisely, we are going to speak about the 104K uh, plantation. Uh, the reason for speaking about this tea this week is that uh, I have uh, added two new teas to my boutique, the Da Uling 96K, that was harvested on October 10 uh, of um, this month and the uh, dialing 104k that was harvested on October the 5th. Uh, so if you are watching this uh, class live on Facebook please um, stay until the end and uh, if you have questions you will be able to ask these questions live. I will see them here on uh, my pad and I will be able to uh, reply to you right away. Uh, also don't forget to uh, give me a like so that uh, I know you appreciate these classes and uh, it will also help for the reference. And if you are watching this on replay on uh, YouTube uh, then also, please give me a like, say what you want uh, in the comment section, maybe even you can uh, ask a question there also, and I will uh, answer when I find the time. Okay, so let's uh, go to our uh, subject of today, dialing. First, 96K, 104K, why, why, uh, what is this? Uh, strange code that, uh, that we are hearing with, uh, with K, what does this mean? So uh, this number uh, actually refers to the location of the plantation because we are in the mountains, huh? we are not in a, in a town where uh, there is a street name and a, a street number, uh, we are in, uh, in the countryside and uh, to locate the um, place where the tea comes from uh, in dialing, the way it's done is that we say, to have a more precision, um, on which uh, kilometer on the road number eight this location is close by. Because, uh, so there's uh, this road number eight that uh, goes through, ta uh, through Taiwan in the center. Uh, it passes Lishan at the kilometer, uh, it ends Lishan at the kilometer 84 and then you have 12 more kilometers uh, roughly or 10 more kilometers to do before you start to arrive at the um, uh, Daoling mountain, uh, mountain range and uh, so Daoling is a, a tall mountain and a long mountain so uh, you to be very precise about um, where the tea comes from in Daoling uh, the farmers have come with the idea of saying, okay, this is the location that is close to the kilometer 96, 97, 98, 100, 102, 104, 905, etc. But now 105 now is gone, it has been uprooted. I was um, one of the very first to uh, write about it in um, let me see, that was in uh, May 28th, 2015. I wrote an article, uh, Dialing So Enjoy. This article received over 4,500 views. Uh, and uh, it's, so it's one of the most viewed uh, article on, uh, on my blog because it attracted a lot of uh, attention uh, in internationally in the tea world that uh, Taiwan would uproot some uh, of its best uh, oolong trees in uh, Daoling because they were planted on 
um, public ground that was actually uh, um, is actually land for a national park. So for preservation against the erosion, uh, the people managing the park thought that uh, uh, tea trees don't have roots that are uh, deep enough to stabilize the, um, uh, the ground, uh, the earth, in, uh, and the soil in, uh, in this um, mountainous terrain where there's a very steep uh, inclination. So they uh, decided when the leases of the farmers were up for, for grabs again to uh, stop leasing these terrains and take them back and then stop making tea uh, on several plantations. So this was uh, uh, news in 2015 already. It was uh, a big uh, sadness for a lot of uh, oolong lovers because there were less uh, oolong from uh, this uh, highest um, elevation available. So uh, 105k, this one really is gone. 104k, uh, actually one is gone but this one is still there. Now this particular location uh, is very small, it only produces 100 gin, that's 60 kilogram per season and uh, there are two seasons for dialing, it's spring and winter. Uh, so uh, yes, I've counted the other day uh, that uh, only 800 packs are made each season, so 1,600 packs of 75 gram are available uh, for sale every, um, uh, every year only. That's even less than the number of bottles of uh, Domaine Romane Conti, where they have uh, over roughly uh, 4,500 bottles. So it's more exclusive than Domaine Romane Conti, which is the top wine in, uh, in France and probably in the world. Now, the reason that uh, uh, Dioning is this really top location in Taiwan has to do with um, the character of high mountain oolongs. High mountain oolongs uh, are planted in high mountains, that's over 1000 meters in elevation. And what makes uh, them so, uh, so good is that um, the higher you go in elevation, the more particular the climate is. You have uh, in, you have, actually you have very short years, uh, the, so spring is uh, the spring harvest happens uh, end of May and uh, the winter is already in uh, early October uh, as we see. So because uh, the winter season, the time when it's very cold, is much longer than in the um, plains. So it's, the higher you go, the, the longer it's very cold. So this makes that the trees don't have so much time to grow and they have a lot of time to rest and resting the trees is always a, a good thing uh, because you don't over harvest them uh, two only, only two harvests a year uh, so they have time to uh, get nutrients from the soil uh, much more than from uh, fertilizers uh, so this is uh, also a good thing and then in the uh, high mountains Another thing happens is that so the higher you go, the colder it is during the night. So and then during the night, this uh, cold helps to preserve the freshness of the leaves uh, much better than um, uh, during a, a warm night. And uh, so this uh, this is this makes it possible to let the leaves grow larger without them becoming bitter or old uh, because they are so well preserved. Uh, it's uh, like you have a fridge so you you grow uh, the leaves during the day when it's uh, uh, very hot during a short time uh, in May or in uh, September and then you harvest them in, in October. So then it's still very hot during the day but uh, it is going to be uh, very cold at night and then you keep this freshness and then the next day the, the uh, leaves continue to grow and you are able to, uh, to pick uh, very large leaves 
and uh, but leaves that are very fresh and this freshness also then enables you enables the farmer to make a very low oxidation level um, it's um, a little bit like uh, sushi huh? uh, when you when you eat uh, when you go to japan uh, the best uh, sashimi the best uh, raw cuts uh, raw fish is when you get the freshest fish uh, directly at uh, maybe directly at the port directly from uh, from the fisherman this is when the fish is the freshest and this is also when it's going to um, uh, is the most suitable to eat it raw if you uh, keep it for too long uh, especially not at uh, right temperature if it's too too warm then the fish loses its freshness and uh, it's better than to cook it than to eat it raw well, it's a little bit the same with high mountain oolong. The the better uh, the uh, the cooler the leaves uh, were during the night, the better the freshness was preserved. The lower you can um, oxidize the um, the leaves without them feeling uh, awkward. Uh, to um, to say this way, so. Uh, what happens with um, dialing? Why do they really want to have a very precise um, location, 96k, 97k uh, to 104k? Is that um, on this road, the, the farther you go so, uh, to, towards 104k, the higher uh, the elevation is going to be. And I've done this uh, during several seasons. Uh, when you compare uh, one plantation to another, uh, really almost uh, nine times out of ten, the higher placed location does produce a better quality, a finer quality than the location that is uh, a bit below. Which doesn't mean that it's bad, just that you can always find better. So 104k now is the plantation that is still available, uh, um, but in very uh, small quantity, and does and that does uh, therefore the uh, the tea at the highest elevation and at the highest quality. Now the elevation is 2,580. The previous record was 2,650 meters, but this is. Uh, more for the uh, more for the record book. It does not mean so much, because uh, in the same plantation there is always a, a very large difference between the trees that are on the top and the trees that are, that are below. And of course, uh, when you get this in uh, the uh, this record of elevation is uh, really taken the the one from the very top. So uh, the next question is. How are we going to brew best this 104k? Well, let, let's mm, smell it. Oh, it's lavande. I, it's almost like uh, being in grass uh, on a spring day and uh, smelling a, a field of lavender. Now, it's going to. Uh, how to brew it? We have to think about its character. So. And, from what I've explained, uh, this is a uh, rolled oolong with a very low oxidation level, so the leaves are very green. Uh, in uh, winter, you might see a little bit of buds, uh, white buds. Um, unlike uh, competition teas, you, you will still have some, uh, uh, a few stems. And so it really smells uh, very, very light very flowery uh, and this uh, character of lightness we want to preserve and the best way to preserve lightness to get uh, to the um, uh, to the fragrance is with a uh, silver teapot so today i'm going to to use my silver teapot i'm preheating it first Now, if you have read my uh, recent um, blog post about uh, this tea, I've compared it a little bit to um, 
uh, a lift off to space. You know, we, uh, we want to go to, uh, to the stars, we want to see this blue sky that there is in the um, plantation of uh, Daryling. If, when you, if you ever have the chance to, to go there, uh, really it's magnificent. You are in the high mountains, you have either very tall trees uh, or you have a, v uh, a wonderful blue sky, uh, especially in the morning. Uh, you, and then you have uh, clouds in the afternoon that uh, already help with the moisture and the freshness. But really what, f what I remember from going there always in the morning is this uh, wonderful, very large blue sky and you seem to be also closer to, um, uh, to the stars. Uh, it's also one of the best places to watch stars in Taiwan because you are away from um, uh, city lights and uh, there is uh, very little a um, few clouds, uh, a little fog uh, in the mountain at night, so you can sometimes have really very, very bright nights to, to see the stars. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, we have preheated the teapot. And another uh, thing that I was saying is that uh, silver is really a high-tech uh, uh, component and it already started during the Tang Dynasty. In the Tang Dynasty, the emperors, they were using silver to make, uh, to grind uh, the the green tree uh, green tea uh, also to store it uh, the salt also was placed on um, uh, silver uh, plates and uh, I've linked um, on uh, on my article to um, a picture I took in um, in an exhibition of this uh, imperial treasures from the Tang Dynasty and in the in that link you will see this uh, grinder made of silver and what is interesting it's silver and gold actually and what is interesting is uh, on this uh, grinder uh, I've noticed I remembered only later after the after I wrote the, the post there is a Pegasus uh, a flying horse so actually this makes me think that already the people in the Tang Dynasty, not only were they looking at the moon, but they were already thinking that with tea they are flying. And that's why they put this Pegasus, this flying horse, uh, on this grinder. So the same idea, we are going to fly away, fly to the moon, fly into space with this uh, dialing from 140. Now I'm already sweating. That's maybe more as a re because I'm uh, making this, uh, this class and I'm now I'm getting a bit excited about drinking this tea. Uh, so silver is the um, uh, tea word that has the highest uh, conductivity. It conduces heat the best. It's going to, uh, and this heat helps to get more, more fragrant out of the leaves and then quickly also go down in um, temperature and uh, not have too much uh, heavy tastes. Um, of course you can also use uh, a Juni teapot. This would also be very good. It would maybe add a little bit more to, to the taste. But here um, having uh, silver is really to taste purity. Uh, and these uh, leaves at this top altitude are really as pure as they can get. Uh, I'm waiting now a few more moments for the um, uh, water to be boiling. Let me see who is there. Olena is there. Good morning everyone. Have a nice day and tea. Thank you Olena for uh, joining today's class. Uh, and it's going to come soon. It's a little bit cooler today in Taiwan. Uh, we have a little bit of a grey day, but with tea it always uh, brings sunshine, uh, bringing whatever um, 
climate there was at the time of uh, of the harvest. Uh, the, you are always transported uh, with tea to the place where where it was made. So it's always uh, a joy to be able to travel uh, from your tea space to the plantation without uh, too much of an effort and it's much less dangerous than taking a uh, spacecraft into uh, into the sky uh, maybe and it's also much much uh, safer and uh, cheaper and much less uh, much more silent also <laughs> Now we can, we want to unfurl the leaves, so we can turn fast and Silva is not afraid of being poured on. This will also increase the uh, fragrance. So my blue colors, blue and white Qinghua, is really also uh, about the colors in the sky. So I'm really thinking and uh, I have a little planet uh, transparent. So it's quite normal that uh, the tea brew sh should be quite light in temperature, in, uh, in, uh, in color. It should not be a, a heavy color. That's why also I'm using Celadon to uh, enhance a little bit this uh, green, light green color. Okay, great. And mm, already sm a scent of um, again lavande, vetiver, very light, very fresh flowers. And again, thanks to uh, the teapot made of silver, it's really a very pure taste. Um, but it is um, uh, it is coating in the in the palette. Mm. A taste of lightness, but at the same time, it's uh, sweet and uh, persistent and uh, beautiful and uh, and very pure. Uh, and even though it feels uh, very cooling in the in the mouth, like a, a breeze, uh, like a fresh mint in in the mouth, uh, at the same time I I, I do feel warm uh, in uh, uh, in my hands. So it's uh, really very uh, very enjoyable. Also, uh, not just for the nose, but um, also for for the body. Mm. Yeah, an amazing tea. Okay, uh, I think this will conclude today's um, tea class and uh, I say cheers, see you next week, bye bye. Mm. Ah.